So my good buddy, uh, Bim Troublemaker, over in the other side of the world, has gone and made a lovely ellipsoid geometry, which is parametric. So this is sort of a difficult piece of geometry to just make right out of the box with Revit or Vasari, but he's got a little rig to do one and made it so that it can be flexible. And as much as I love this egg, I think there's an easier way to do it. Look at this. There's a lot of lines in here, and I am lazy. So let's figure out an easier way to do this. All respect to BIM Troublemaker. So here we go. I've got my elliptoid, and it is flexible. You can either do it through numerical flexing of this family, where you know I'm going to make it all sorts of different sizes. Let's try that, see what happens. It's going to verbal through this framework. It's going to change its sizes. I can also go in and I can select the framework and I can flex it manually like so. It takes a little while to think about it, but it does it. So there we go. So what is this thing made up out of? This is made up of a bunch of loaded adaptive component families. Here's one of them right here. And what we can do is we can take one right out of the sides here and place it. We can inspect it. So it's basically a loaded profile. And I can grab the points and I can move them around. Now, there's two different kinds of adaptive points here. There's placement points, which are sort of these free points that you can move around and host on other things. And there's these guys, which are shape handle points. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what's special about them and how they work with this sort of rig. So anyway, if I go in here and I select all the instances of this in the entire project and delete them, you can see that... Just get rid of these guys. I just have a framework here, which is, you know, my one ellipse, two ellipses, and then I have an axis, basically, that's going through the center of this whole thing. See that guy right there? And then it's just set up with regular parameters just so that it all flexes together nicely. So if I take this guy and I move it like this, everybody holds together. Now, I've got this family loaded into it. Let's take a look at this guy. This is my loaded adaptive component. And my loaded adaptive component is just uh, an ellipse and a placement point and then two shape handle points and a couple of parameters holding them together. And I'm just going to make a new one of these guys so we can see how this gets done from scratch. New family. And I'm in Vasari. You can do the same thing in Revit. So I'm going to go adaptive component. And I'm going to put down three points. Boing, boing, boing. Doesn't really matter where. And in fact, you don't even need to do this part, but it makes it a little bit easier to see how things are going on. And I'm just uh, aligning these points to the axes. And it just makes it easier to sort of see things. Now I'm going to select all of them, and I'm going to make adaptive. So now I've got point one, two, and three. Now I'm going to start distinguishing these guys from each other. I'm going to take these two guys, and I'm going to make them shape handle points. See, we got reference point, placement point, and shape handle point. Shape handle points have some special qualities to them. Constrained, you see that this is a quality now of a shape handle point, and constrained allows me to, and I'm going to pick the XY plane here. What that means is that now these two guys, and you see that their dots got a little bit smaller, these two guys are now sort of subservient to this point, and they are locked to the XYZ axis of that point. Um, and you won't really be able to simulate that here, but you'll see how that behaves once you get it loaded into the family. And what that means is that all of these guys are going to stay aligned, and it's going to be important when I get into my ellipsis. So now I'm going to go right ahead and I'm going to start working on the actual geometry that I want to do here. So I've got model line geometry, and I'm going to make it ellipse, and I'm just going to do it down on the reference level. And I'm just going to snap to the intersection those two points, and I'm going to go one, two, as we do with an ellipse. Oh, damn it. I don't want to do it with a filled area. You can, but I don't like those. Uh, make surface from closed loop. Okay, so now I'm just making something that's just simple lines. What did I do? Oh, I just did model lines. I lost my ellipses. Uh, that's why you know it's live. Ellipse, not making closed surfaces. 
snap to intersection. And there we go, without further ado. All right, so now I've got my ellipsis, and I'm going to get both of these guys to have, I'm going to parameterize this guy. I'm going to say that this is my, let's make that our Y axis. So I'm going to make it capital Y and make it an instance parameter because I'm going to change each instance of this loaded guy. And I'm going to add another parameter and we'll call this X. And I'm going to also make this an instance parameter. And now I'm also going to set some relationships between my placement point and my shape handle points. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go from the point to the point like that. And from the point, I'm going to tab into it to the point right there. And now this allows me to get something called reporting parameters. I'm going to add a parameter to this guy and we'll call this, which one did I get? We'll call this YR, R for reporting. And I'm going to go like that. And now, so this guy is just, this reporting parameter is just going to start telling me what the distance is for, between these two points. And I can use that to drive other pieces of geometry. And I'm going to do the same thing here where I'm going to go I'm going to add an X reporting instance reporting parameter to that guy. So now I've got a relationship between my placement point and my shape handle point. My shape handle points are constrained to the X, Y axis of this guy. And now I've got this ellipsis out here, which I need to actually have driven by these two points, because all three of these points are going to actually be what is describing my ellipsoid. So I go into my family types here, and I've got, I've got my X, which I now want to get driven by X, R. And I have Y, which I want to have driven by X, R, uh, by Y, R, and I'm going to go shabam. And you're going to see that these guys all snap together. So now they are coincident. If I take this guy, and I'm going to carefully try flexing this guy, because you want to keep things aligned, we'll see that everything moves together now. So if I go and, oh, and I'm going to do one more thing here. And this is just sort of a helper. So I selected all those points, and I'm going to make them visible over here in the properties. And that just means that I can get at them, and I can it'll make it easier for me to access these guys once I get them into the project. So I'm going to go back over to, this is the other guy that I had made before. But we're going to use our new guy. So here I am back in my project, uh, where I've got my scaffolding. Now I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to load it into the project. And... Do, do, do. Yeah, we'll overwrite it. And I've got family one, or family two. I'm going to drag it in. You can see I've got it there on my tooltip. And if I put it over here, it's going to host onto this line. You might have to tab to it. But you see how it turns from different orientations? Now it's laying flat. And now it's, if I tab into this line, sort of standing up perpendicularly. That's because if you host a point, just a regular old point, on a line, and I'm going to select that guy. See that? See that work plane that it has? It is created uh, perpendicularly to whatever it's hosted on. And these points that happen with the adaptive components work exactly the same way. And you see my shape handle points right here and here? They have also snapped to attention right at a perpendicular relationship to that point. And I'm going to get rid of that guy just for clarity. Now what I can do with these shape handle points is I can pick them and I can pick a new host for it. And I want this guy to lie on this ring here. So I'm just going to pick anywhere on it. And you see that? It just snapped to a perpendicular line from that point because my shape handle points are being driven in some ways by my placement point to always stay constrained to their x y plane so i'm going to do the same thing here with this guy i'm just going to pick like that and see that so now i've got a nicely aligned loaded profile essentially on my elliptical rig so what i can do now is i can just i'm just going to pick that point in the middle and i'm holding down the control key which allows me to copy drag. And so now I can just copy drag this little profile all around like so. And you see how everybody's staying nicely constrained to 
my framework. I'm going to do one more over here. And you know, you can add as much or as little detail as you want, depending on what your project requires. So now I have all of these hosted profiles, right? And if I take this guy, which is my underlying rig, I can flex it. Let's go in. And all of my profiles are going to stay hosted to it, like so. Now, I don't have a form yet, right? So I'm going to select one of these guys. And I'm going to go select all instances in entire project. So I've got all of these guys. And now I can just hit create form. Shabam. I've got my ellipses. Now I've got these sort of stumpy ends, right? And it looks like I've also got some bad relationships here, right? But again, this is as much or as little detail as I want to add. And I can also sort of redistribute my profiles. Um, whoops, I grabbed the wrong one. I want to get one of these guys in here just to make it sort of conform more closely to my ellipses. And you know, I could add a ton more of these profiles, but also I can go in here and I can get this guy. See that guy? This is the very last profile. If I select that point, and I'll probably have to tab into it, I can see that it's got certain parameters on it, which is basically where it lies along this line. Uh, and I want to just push this way out to the end. So I can do that pretty easily. And I'll do it at point two. Let's see, and then that just moves it closer out to the end. So I can get it close to, but not exactly, coming down to a point. And um, so I've got my constrained guy, and I can add more profiles if I want, just to make this more detailed. And I can go and I can either numerically or manually adjust this thing. So let's see, let's get a, let's make it nice and narrow. Oops, not 25 here. Anyway, but you get the idea of what you can do with this thing because we have showed how it flexes before. And so this guy will just keep flexing and you can make your ellipsoid. So again, all respect, all honor to BIM Troublemaker. This just might be an easier way to do it. Thanks for watching. And you can have this file for download.